giant beavers, dinosaurs, mammoths, and hyenas. These are more prehistoric creatures scientists found frozen in ice. Here's something you probably wouldn't be expecting to see on this list, ancient camels. Believe it or not, camels actually first appeared in North America more than 40 million years ago. Over time, they split into two main groups, the camels we know today and their relatives, llamas and alpacas. The camels made their way across the Bering Land Bridge, while llamas and alpacas moved south. But it was another species, the Camelops hasternus, which stuck around in North America until the Ice Age. Some of these camels roamed as far south as Honduras, while others made it all the way to Alaska and the Yukon. In 2008, gold miners in Alaska discovered some Ice Age bones, which turned out to belong to this extinct camel species. The bones were so well preserved in the cold that researchers managed to extract DNA. Imagine a six foot long beaver weighing 220 pounds. Ice Age giant beavers had six inch long front teeth. They would have looked like fierce predators, but they didn't eat meat. This massive rodent was about the size of a black bear and had a tail that resembled a muskrat's rather than today's typical beaver tail. A 2019 study looked at fossils from the Yukon in Ohio dating back 10,000 to 50,000 years and revealed that the giant beaver's diet consisted mostly of aquatic plants. Tessa Plint, a researcher with Harriet Watt University, explained that by studying the chemical makeup of fossilized bones and teeth, scientists can figure out what an animal ate, even tens of thousands of years later. Understanding the diet of these ancient animals helps them learn more about how climate change affected them. As the earth warmed and dried, the giant beaver couldn't compete with smaller, more adaptable beavers that survived. In 2010, a team of Russian scientists found a well-preserved mammoth in Siberia, later named Yuka. She was a young mammoth, about six to eight years old, and she lived around 39,000 years ago. Yuka's body was in really good shape. Its body measured about two and a half meters long, and it was remarkably intact, with her trunk, bones, some of her flesh, hair, and eyes still preserved, making her one of the most well-preserved mammoth specimens ever found. Pretty incredible to see. I haven't seen it in person, but based on pictures and video that I've seen of it, it's crazy how well preserved it is. They think she might have fallen into a mud pit or drowned, which helped preserve her so well. People probably butchered her for meat, too, as there were cut marks on her bones. In 2002, an amazing discovery was made in northern Siberia. The remains of a woolly mammoth were found frozen in the permafrost near the Siberian village of Yukagir. The specimen, which was an adult male, turned out to be in remarkable condition. This mammoth's head, still covered in skin, was so well preserved that it looked almost almost fresh. When polar explorer Bernard Bouguiz heard about the find, he led a team to retrieve the mammoth's remains. The team made three trips to the site, carefully gathering pieces of the mammoth's body and putting them together. It gave scientists a ton of information about woolly mammoths. For example, they discovered that the mammoth had temporal glands between its eyes and ears. These glands would have helped regulate body temperature. The, the mammoth's feet were also a key find. The soles had deep cracks in it, which would have helped the animal grip icy surfaces while walking. A specimen also included the tusks, front legs, and even parts of the stomach and intestines. Based on the size of its bones and tusks, scientists estimated that this mammoth was over nine feet tall at the shoulder and weighed around four to five tons. Scimitar cats, or homotheriums, were fierce prehistoric predators. Their fossils are rare. Because of this, scientists used to think that they were part of a small population. That changed in 2011 when a bone was found in permafrost at a mining site near Dawson City in Canada. This bone belonged to a scimitar cat, not a saber-toothed cat, which are often confused with scimitar cats. Scimitar cats had shorter curved teeth that were serrated, unlike the long, flat teeth of saber tooths. What made this find even more exciting was how well preserved the bone was in the ice. Researchers at the University of Copenhagen were able to sequence the entire genome from this bone. Their genetic makeup hints towards a scimitar toothed cats as being highly skilled hunters, said Michael Westbury, an evolutionary genomicist at the University of Copenhagen. Going on to say they, quote, likely had very good daytime vision and displayed complex social behaviors, end quote. These cats also had adaptations for endurance. Their bones and cardiovascular systems were strong. They were built for long distance running. And based on this, researchers believe scimitar cats hunted in packs, wearing down their 
prey during the day. Scientists estimated the specimen was over 47,500 years old. Scimitar cats likely went extinct around 10,000 years ago, along with many of the animals that they hunted, like mammoths and woolly rhinos. Most people think of hyenas as the scavengers of Africa, but the ancient Arctic also had its share of these creatures as well. These ancient hyenas lived over 5 million years ago, and its remains have been found around the world, from Mongolia to Kansas to Mexico. In 2019, evolutionary biologist Jack Sang analyzed a pair of fossilized hyena teeth from the Yukon. He quickly identified them as belonging to a species that once roamed the ancient Arctic. These teeth likely belonged to a hyena that lived around 850,000 to 1.4 million years ago. This hyena was equipped with teeth perfect for crushing bones, probably feeding on ancient caribou, bison, and maybe even baby mammoths. Eventually these hyenas disappeared, and researchers think they were outcompeted by other Ice Age predators like the short-faced bear or bone crushing dog. Never heard of those before till today. What a awesome name. In 2018, miners working at Hester Creek in the Yukon discovered a mummified squirrel, perfectly preserved from around 30,000 years before. At first, this lump of fur, claws, and limbs didn't look like much, but scientists examined it more and realized that they'd found an Arctic ground squirrel that had died during hibernation. Researchers nicknamed the squirrel Hester after the area where it was discovered, and it's amazing to think that this little guy was running around the Yukon several thousand years ago, said museum representatives. When the mummified squirrel was first found, its exact identity wasn't clear until the team noticed little hands, claws, and a tail. Grant Zazula, a paleontologist from the Yukon government, was part of the team that studied the squirrel, saying, It's not quite recognizable until you see those little hands and these claws, and you see a little tail, and then you see ears. The team figured that Hester was likely hibernating when it died. Arctic ground squirrels curl up into balls like this one when they hibernate in underground dens, often lined with nests made of leaves. These nests are usually found empty, so finding one with an actual squirrel inside was pretty cool. To avoid damaging the specimen, they decided not to unravel the ball of fur. Instead, they had it x-rayed by a local veterinarian who'd expected the bones to be in pretty bad condition. But when the x-ray results came in, the squirrel skeleton was actually in great condition, and it looks nearly identical to a modern Arctic ground squirrel. In 2021, scientists discovered a tiny microscopic creature that had been frozen in Siberian permafrost for over 24,000 years. The team found it buried 11 and a half feet deep. The little animal was what's called a belloid rotifer, and despite being frozen solid for thousands of years, it actually came back to life, and on top of that, it was still able to reproduce. Rotifers are tough little creatures. They typically live in freshwater or moist soil and are known for surviving in extreme conditions like radiation, dehydration, low oxygen, and freezing temperatures. To confirm its age, scientists radiocarbon dated the soil surrounding the critter. Stas Malaven, a, a co-author of the study, couldn't believe it, saying, we revived animals that saw woolly mammoths, which is quite impressive. I agree. Next on the list, we have Senek. In 2021, there was a pretty amazing discovery in Greenland, a new dinosaur. New in that we didn't know it existed, not a living dinosaur, sadly. Researchers identified a previously unknown dinosaur species based on well-preserved skulls. This newfound species was named E.C. Senek, meaning cold bone in Greenlandic Inuit. The remains of this creature date back to the late Triassic period, about 214 million years ago. The skulls were first found in 1994, and at the time, they were believed to belong to a platyosaurus. But recent advancements in research techniques, including micro CT scans, show that these skulls actually belonged to a different dino altogether, a dinosaur that was different from any known species. To visualize the full form of the skulls, researchers used digital modeling after the micro CT scans. These were bipedal herbivores, medium sized, and shared a lot of similarities with sauropods. Those are those long necked giraffe looking dinosaurs you probably remember from Jurassic Park. But the E.C. Senec would have been a lot smaller than them. They're pretty cool looking dinosaurs, almost like a sauropod mixed with a velociraptor, at least to me. In 2016, scientists discovered a 12,400 year old mummified puppy. This puppy was discovered in the permafrost along a river in Siberia. Researchers believe the puppy died in a landslide 
and its body became preserved in the ice, its fur was intact, and the body from its nose to its tail was almost completely preserved. The only part that wasn't in perfect condition was the brain, which had started to decompose, but even still, about 70 to 80% of the brain was still intact. This puppy is one of the few animals in the Pleistocene era which has a well-preserved brain. While there have been other dog fossils found from the same time period, they were too decomposed to study. The puppy's condition is especially special because its brain could help researchers learn more about ancient animals. In fact, they were saying at the time that they could potentially use the DNA and tissues from this puppy to bring it back to life, which would have been nuts. Along with the frozen puppy, human tools were found near the site, meaning that this dog was domesticated and owned by people. With all that said, I've been your host, James. I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.